Okay, so this paper is from Eurosys 2021. Um, I think it was uh, present. There is a very nice YouTube presentation for it. If you haven't checked it, check it. Um, and I think that's uh, uh, that YouTube video has today's date, but uh, from 2021. So this is a year anniversary of that video, I think. Um, and this is also the hundredth paper of this group. So it has that distinction. Um, I read this paper a couple months back. Um, it's uh, on Paxos and uh, it's another Paxos variant, which is uh, all uh, that I needed to get uh, interested in it. I uh, really liked the paper because um, it uh, simplified the leaderless Paxos um, uh, and uh, got it closer to working with, um, you know, real-time clocks. Uh, um, well, yeah, that's another story that I will cover. I thought it was real-time clocks. It turns out to be logical clocks. I had read the paper uh, as uh, thinking that, um, 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 thinking that um, um, uh, proposal uh, I, uh, slot numbers, are given um, using using uh, physical clocks uh, from loosely synchronized clocks, and the paper made sense. The paper made total sense, and I really liked it because uh, the paper make it very close to uh, making it loosely uh, uh, synchronized clock timestamps, but it still used the uh, logical clocks, which I realized after I finished. Uh, um, reading the paper and asked uh, one of the authors uh, a question about it, um, that this was actually using logical clocks, but it's fine because it almost got there. And later uh, for um, Cassandra uh, improvement, uh, basically they, 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 they took this and used um, 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 loosely synchronized um, clocks. So this uh, Benedict, uh, Eliot uh, Smith uh, has presented this um, in, the, uh, in this group also. So um, that's uh, very close related, okay? Okay, let's go. <laughs> After too uh, long of a um, preamble. It's a leaderless Paxos variant. Um, it implements uh, state machine replication. What is... Um, what is leaderless uh, Paxos mean? So it means that there is no bid for being a Paxos leader. Any node can become a proposer anytime. Uh, there could be many concurrent proposers, each of them that could be successful um, uh, concurrently, provided that the uh, commands, uh, provided that the commands are um, not dependent on each other, independent comments. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's go to Paxos. Paxos is leader based. Paxos is not leaderless. Phase one, a leader emerges. Can I lead you? Yes. Um, and then accept this. Yes. And then commit this. In multi Paxos, only this phase two is done, but it's leader uh, based. And the paper starts by motivating the leaderless approach, uh, uh, talking about the drawbacks of this uh, leader-based uh, Paxos approach. What are the drawbacks? You can see that the leader is doing much more work compared to any of the followers. That's the drawback. So multi-Paxos relies on a leader that defines the order in which the client comments are executed at the replicas. Right, so each basically Paxos uh, is used for implementing state machine replication. They first agree on the um, order of commands in this right ahead block, then every replica can execute it without uh, gaps in the same order, and they will be in the same state. This is called replicated state machine approach to fault tolerance. But 
this entire uh, responsibility is on the leader. The leader defines the order, executed at the replicas, the leader runs the protocol, sends the um, phase 2A message, receives phase 2B replies, and uh, this leader becomes a bottleneck for scaling, and this leader becomes a single point of uh, temporary unavailability and contention, contention meaning bottleneck, and um, in a Joe distributed uh, deployment, uh, if you are away from the leader, you need to incur a large uh, um, um, message latency just to get to the leader, and that's another drawback of the leader-based things. Side remark, of course, the paper motivates the leaderless approaches this way, but as a side remark, um, there has been research. We have been involved in this research, uh, Alexi, me, and uh, other members of our group. We developed many techniques to scale leader-based Paxos, um, including PIC Paxos, W Paxos, again, multi-leader approach where you partition per key and you can, uh, inside the Paxos protocol, you can uh, do the key stealing, key um, um, key ownership uh, change through Paxos, so it's a uh, fault tolerant and safe. You can scale out the uh, reads by PQR reads, which is uh, also used in compartmentalized Paxos. You can scale different parts of the um, thing to avoid uh, uh, these problems. Okay, so this is side remark, but still leaderless Paxos is interesting. Let's go into leaderless Paxos. Um, here, there is no dedicated leader, no bit for be being a leader. Task of ordering commands is distributed among the nodes. That's the distinction of leaderless Paxos. So that means that instead of in a geo distributed deployment, instead of trying to figure out where the leader, going to the leader location through a long latency link, you can just uh, choose the node in the uh, leaderless Paxos uh, deployment that's closest to you, and you can submit the comment to it, and that will get consensus by leading, leading that uh, command, opportunistically leading that command. Um, so the benefits of the leaderless uh, approach would be lower average latency, especially in a geo-distributed setup, fairer latency distribution with respect to client locations, especially in a um, uh, geo-distributed setup, and higher availability because um, one node down doesn't mean anything. You just go to the closest node to get consensus on the command because each node is um, replaceable. There is no specialized uh, role leader ro role. Okay, the most famous and uh, the most famous um, uh, leaderless Paxos protocol is ePaxos. I think it came around 2013. There has been a recent paper called um, ePaxos Revisited, I believe. Uh, this figure is from that. Uh, this explains the um, uh, ePaxos idea well. So all of these commands are dependent on each other, okay? So they are all setting something to X. They are all X is set to five by this one, uh, red X is set to nine by blue, X is set to three by the green. So they need to be serialized. If they were not dependent, um, if one of them was about Y, we didn't have to serialize, but it turns out that they are all dependent. We need to serialize and, this makes it interesting in a leaderless setup. How do we serialize these so that these are all executed on the respective replicated state machines of each of these nodes? So there are five nodes, A, B, C, D, E. They each uh, keep a replicated state machine. The epexos is used for getting consensus on the right ahead log to these uh, replicated state machines. Um, but how do we order in a distributed manner uh, these things? 
Okay. In Ipex, so the first column is um, um, uh, three nodes uh, out of five with some optimizations. And here we, uh, we get the lucky thing because the first column agrees that, okay, I will accept and I don't see a dependency. I don't see a dependency. When the first column replies agree, we can commit. And this is best case, right? I wasn't a leader. I didn't go through phase one to be a leader. I just reached the phase cor uh, fast quorum. Fast quorum replied to me. Normally fast quorum is like uh, three fourths of the notes or two thirds of the notes, which I keep forgetting. Uh, but um, um, with five uh, notes, there is this optimization that lets you do it with three notes. okay? Um, fine, so we got lucky. We did it in one round trip. That's the best of uh, um, um, leaderless um, uh, Paxos, um, Epaxos, cool. Now let's look at the blue one. Um, this client uh, sent to E, now E is going to uh, execute this command. X is uh, going to be set to nine. By I mean by execute, um, serialize this command in the right ahead log. The consensus is used for getting agreement on the order of the commands in the right ahead log that will be fed to the replicated state machines, okay? So it again tries to do it in one round and it sends, okay, the first node and it contacts these two nodes, that is fast quorum. The first node says, okay, I don't see any dependencies, let's go. But the second node gives a different answer. So we don't have the fast quorum, uh, we don't have the fast round in this case. Okay, why? Because this says that I, I see a dependency. Now these two responses from the quorum do not, uh, um, do not uh, agree. In this case, we cannot conclude in one round. We have to go and we have to uh, inform enough number of nodes, our first quorum, about these uh, dependencies to get them in the same page so that uh, uh, if something happens, I die before committing this. Uh, uh, a recovery proposal can be made and it will um, recover in the same order, okay? So I need a slow path. I need a slow round after the first round. And this is actually another Paxos phase two uh, operation. So we tell them that, okay, accept this with the uh, full, full, um, dependencies, when it is accepted, now it's safe for me to commit. And when I commit, I asynchronously send people the answers, okay? So first path did not work. We also had a slow round, cool. Okay, now consider the green green one, okay? The client again contacted A, X is equal to three. This uh, B and C is its um, uh, fast quorum. And then it sends it, um, it's, it, it, but but you would first think that, okay, this node has seen the blue one, but this node has not seen the blue one, we will get an inconsistency. Yeah, this node has not seen the blue one, but it received the commit message from the blue before this message arrived. So both of the nodes, B and C, are now aware of this dependency and they both give the same answer. And so the green can also complete the fast path in the same round. Okay, that's Epaxos. That's bonus uh, lecture from uh, me to you because we were not going to discuss Epaxos, we were going to discuss Tempo, but Tempo builds on Epaxos. Um, see about Epaxos, these dependencies, they, they can grow when there are a lot of uh, concurrent uh, overlapping within a same temporality, uh, temporal window, let's say, uh, proposals, these, um, um, these, these dependencies can grow and these dependencies also form strongly connected graphs, which you have to commit together. You need to track these dependencies also for the execution. What do I mean for by execution? By execution, I mean the, repl uh, the replicated state machines at these nodes need to, when they can execute, for example, the um, uh, green, green command, they need to check that, okay, 
did the blue comment execute? Then I will execute. How do I check it? This node, for example, uh, for executing it, um, it doesn't get that information. It needs to be aware that it was executed so it can execute uh, uh, its thing. Okay, so that's, that's the thing. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, let's talk about the drawbacks of the leaderless protocols. Um, we need to maintain explicit dependencies between commands as we have seen in Epaxos. A replica may execute a command only after all its dependencies get executed. These dependencies may form arbitrary long chains. In theory, this could be arbitrary long chains and uh, um, you, you can, with a pathologic uh, uh, scheduling, you can have this uh, keep building up, keep building up without getting to execution. In practice, this means that, well, it's not infinitely long, but some of them could get long and you wait for the others to clear uh, your, your performance, your latency for a, a specific command could be unpredictable. There is a high tail latency, okay? And also the, each node for RSM execution needs to do access work in maintaining and tracking these dependency graph, making sure that, okay, I was dependent on the blue, did blue execute? I need to wait for it. And only after blue execute, then I can do my update, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, this is about this duality of uh, ordering and execution. This is also there in normal Paxos, but in ePaxos, you have to, um, you have to, um, do extra work because you, now you are more democratized, meaning that uh, um, you could, uh, without Paxos groups, you could have federations loosely things inside uh, a space, but you still, for the partially replicated scenario, you still need to wait for the um, ones that you uh, are dependent on somehow um, uh, to check their execution. And that means extra communication, okay? Uh, because execution of commands follow the ordering of commands at the log without leaving empty slots in the log, um, at least in terms of dependencies of a given uh, slot. Unresolved dependencies delay execution of the log. You need to wait for the blue to finish before you execute. The Epexos paper pretty much swept this under the rug, but this is a pain point for uh, Epexos. I mean, yeah, the dependencies um, set can grow. Mencius, you can say Mencius is also sort of a leaderless uh, Paxos protocol. Mencius decoded this in terms of rotating leaders. But again, in Mencius, you had the penalty that if uh, you haven't heard from a rotating leader uh, for its thing, you have to uh, recover that. Right, you cannot. You you are blocked again by that uh, implicit uh, uh, dependency. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, Tempo tries to um, solve this problem. Okay. Uh, in contrast to Epaxos, Tempo avoids tracking dependency graphs, which can stall execution. Using a monotonic logical clock, which at first I thought was a um, um, real-time clock, synchronized clock, um, but uh, monotonic logical clock uh, works. Um, tempo timestamps each application command and executes it only after the timestamp becomes stable. What does it mean for the timestamp becoming st uh, stable? Um, it means that we hear from majority of processes, from majority of processes, not from all processes, and that's the uh, big improvement, that their timestamps uh, go uh, below this low watermark. Then it is safe for us to execute, okay? By just communicating with a quorum, instead of communicating uh, everyone that we have dependency. For example, in Mansius, one node uh, that was leader, was not responding, we need to either 
go get it or recover that. But here we will wait for the timestamps to go above that uh, threshold and uh, uh, we'll, we'll be fine. Okay. Um, okay. And this, this means that the timestamp becoming stable means that all commands with a lower timestamp uh, become known. We, we don't anticipate another command coming in and sweeping in. We don't we don't we don't have omission errors. We don't have omission errors. The YouTube presentation has some really nice uh, animations uh, and examples uh, making this case for um, uh, Mencius uh, uh, compared to tempo and uh, so it's worth looking. Yeah, so tempo says that the contributions in tempo are both the timestamping and the stability detection mechanisms are decentralized. You just need to hear from a quorum. And then this guarantees progress under a synchronous network without, uh, um, without uh, unpredictability coming from uh, uh, trying to track a dependency, trying to, in man's use case, trying to recover a um, um, leader which might have made a proposal in its round, okay? So, yeah, so they make the point that Tempo achieves low tail latency, even in contended workloads, ensuring predictable performance since they don't need to wait for the dependency graphs to resolve. Remember, these dependency graph in theory in Ipexos can grow unboundedly, which can give you unbounded uh, uh, tail latency. Uh, and in practice, it just means unpredictable long tail latencies. And Tempo says that we solve that problem for Ipexos because we encode the uh, dependency problem into timestamp problem and through timestamp stability by this low watermark rising, we avoid that problem. And uh, the nice thing I liked about Tempo is that um, the paper first presents it into a fully replicated scenario, but for a partial replication scenario, it just applies. It just generalizes this very uh, straightforward manner that I just need one slide to tell you about the uh, uh, partially replicated case after we cover the fully replicated case, okay? So here is the protocol overview. To submit a command, the client sends it to the closest node, which acts as its coordinator because this is leaderless boxes. The coordinator computes a timestamp from its local clock for this command before forwarding it to a quorum of replicas. Turn, it may happen that the coordinator's timestamp would be the highest, right? So that's why it needs to compute its uh, uh, timestamp it before sending it. It timestamp it by increasing its clock by clock plus one time, uh, and sends it to fast quorum of replicas. Uh, each of these nodes um, um, will also make a timestamp proposal. If their timestamp is lower than what's already timestamped, uh, they will just uh, use that. Uh, and the coordinator will take a maximum of the responses, okay? If enough replicas in the quorum make the same proposal, enough turns out to be F plus one, where F is the number of files, uh, they use a flexible Paxos to make F independent on N or R. They use R for the replication factor in a fully replicated group. Uh, so F could be a small number like one. Um, if um, enough number of uh, replicas uh, respond, if we see from uh, F replica with the same proposal, including yourself, because uh, with yourself, it makes F plus one. There is uh, this uh, offset in the, in the calculation. You can take the fast path meaning that you are done. If you see this, uh, uh, the, highest, uh, the highest proposal being in F uh, responses, you are done. 
uh, durability will not be affected if you at this point say uh, serialize it into your write ahead log and commit. Uh, the others will commit uh, after uh, after you send your asynchronous commit uh, response. So we are in the fast path. But if not, if we cannot see F, uh, the uh, highest timestamp in F uh, number of responses, the additional round is needed, like in Epaxos, okay, to persist this timestamp. This uh, slope path, uh, they do this uh, uh, using Paxos uh, phase two, they use flexible Paxos optimization, and then uh, they let the recovery uh, deal with a bigger phase one column to recover it. Okay, so that's the um, that's the protocol uh, in a nutshell. But for RSM execution, we need another protocol, right? Because the RSM execution comes later, uh, executes. To execute a command, the replica needs to determine when its timestamp is stable, i.e. it knows uh, all commands with lower timestamps. To check the stability of a timestamp T, each process I tracks timestamp proposals issued by other processes. Once the clocks at any majority of the process, the first time you hear a majority pass this uh, low, um, low watermark timestamp, um, then you can be sure that new commands will get higher timestamps. There is no risk, there is no danger of another command that you are not aware of getting started and sneaking. Um, you have seen all the commands and you can now um, commit this thing, okay? Uh, why, why is there no um, uh, risk of a new command uh, getting a smaller timestamp? Because as we have seen here, the, um, the protocol for giving a timestamp to the command is taking the maximum of uh, what you hear from the fast quorum, from the majority. So when you hear from the majority this, you are safe uh, because uh, uh, the um, Timestamps are computed, proposal timestamps are computed as a uh, um, maximum from this majority and uh, two majorities intersect and um, that uh, new uh, proposal timestamp will have to be greater than T, okay? Okay, so that's uh, protocol in nutshell and execution. Now this protocol in nutshell um, the paper double clicks and goes through the execution. I'll rush through this in five minutes um, to give you an idea of uh, how it works. So this process receives um, the um, M submit message from the client. It becomes uh, the coordinator. It increases its local clock to be clock plus one. This is the initial uh, timestamp proposal it sends to the first quorum. Uh, then the coordinator sends an M proposed message to the fast quorum, which is uh, F plus R over two. R over two is the um, half of the nodes. R is the uh, number of nodes in the system in this replication group. This is full replicated scenario. Uh, and F is the uh, faulty nodes, uh, potentially faulty, faulty nodes, okay? It sends it to the fast quorum. Fast quorum size is F plus R over two. F is generally um, kept low like one. They, they take um, geo-distributed case and uh, because the benefits of this leader list comes in geo-distributed case, okay? Um, and this F plus R over two includes uh, the uh, coordinator itself. And the remaining nodes that are not in fast quorum are send an M payload message. This M payload message is used for the recovery. Upon receiving an M payload message, process simply saves it and um, uh, saves the mapping of the uh, in a in a hash map they, that they have. They say that's for this uh, um, proposal. It must, uh, the fast quorum was this. Later, this fast quorum information will be used for recovery, okay? 
So if you receive the M propose message, you are in the first column of that node, you just, um, um, you compute your own timestamp proposal, okay? Um, and then you respond back to the coordinator. If the um, timestamp in the proposal is higher, you take that and you uh, respond with that. Otherwise, you increase your clock and uh, uh, you respond with that, okay? Um, I, I'm not sure actually, increase the clock or keep it the uh, same and respond. I'm not sure. We need to look at the paper for that. So in the commit phase, what the uh, node does is coordinator after getting the responses from all the fast core members, it looks at the uh, highest timestamp. If the highest timestamp is including itself um, well, in at least F process, because it also learned this, it can match it. If it uh, now it's in F plus one replicated, if this highest time uh, stamp is in F processes, then first path can be taken. Okay. If this highest time stamp is not in F process, then we go to slow round. Um, we, um, uh, we go to the slow round. Okay. Let's go to the, uh, let's do some fast path uh, exercises. There are five nodes, A, B, C, D, E, E is not shown here. A is the coordinator. And we look at uh, four scenarios. In the first scenario, F is equal to two. The coordinator timestamp this with its own clock six and send it. B said that, okay, um, I was six. Now I'm going to timestamp it as seven. Okay, they do increase. C says that I was 10. Now I will timestamp, my timestamp proposal is 11. D says the same thing. Now, F is two. We heard this 11 timestamp, which is the highest timestamp that the coordinator hears back from this fast quorum. Fast quorum is A, B, C, D. It will also copy 11 to itself. This is a fast path because we see the in the F responses, the uh, highest timestamp is replicated in the F responses. So it's a fast path. Okay. How about this case? If this was five going to six, now the uh, highest timestamp is in, in not uh, in F is equal to two uh, responses. So we need to go to the slow path. How about F is equal to one? When F is equal to one, by definition, we are always in the fast path because one node will have the highest timestamp and F is equal to one, we are done because we will also replicate it. Fast path, fast path. So that's the idea. Okay, what about slow path? Slow path, we need to do um, Paxos phase two um, to um, uh, make this uh, timestamp uh, persistent. Uh, to maintain timestamp agreement, the coordinator first reaches an agreement on the computed timestamp with other processes replicating the same partition. Um, this is implemented using single degree flexible Paxos you get, uh, you reach to small number of nodes. I think I, it was F plus one, you replicate and you're done. But for recovery, uh, the uh, according to flexible Paxos, you need to reach more nodes to recover this. And recovery, let's not go into recovery. I mean, Tempo's recovery is simple compared to Epaxos recovery. Epaxos recovery is very, complicated. Tempo's uh, recovery is simple com uh, compared to that, but it still has uh, two past uh, um, payloads, uh, nodes may be involved in recovering this and they will need to figure out that was a proposal made by the original proposer. If so, I need to recover it. Otherwise, I can go through my own recovery path and recover uh, slightly differently. So there is a there is a fork based on that. Um, so th this is the Achilles heel of um, all leaderless protocols. In Paxos, recovery is part of the protocol, but in leaderless protocols, a separate protocol is needed for recovery. This is undesirable um, because this is not uh, exercised uh, much, and this is uh, this is. Um, 
yeah, this has cases and not uh, not not great. But okay, what is great about uh, tempo is that from full replication to a partially replicated thing into a loose um, system where you partial replicate. You don't have Paxos groups like cockroach DB, but you have this partial replication among the I don't know twenty nodes around the node. Um, you can still and if there is a, a comment that involves uh, multi partitions, that involves multi, multi partitions, you still use the same algorithm. The only difference is that um, the command's final timestamp uh, is computed as the maximum of the committed timestamps from each partition, learned from each partition. So, Basically, you do the multi-partition commit by submitting this um, command to each of the partitions, and the same algorithm is used inside the partition. And then once you hear from them, uh, the command's final timestamp is computed as the maximum of committed timestamps, and uh, execution is done based on this timestamp. Okay, the execution is done. Um, once the command is stable at all the partitions it accessed uh, for this timestamp that we provided to it. Evaluation highlights um, um, 33,000 lines of Rust code has been written to um, implement a tempo. Um, um, I think they also implement a couple other protocols to compare with. Um, um, they show that tempo improves throughput over existing uh, state machine protocols by 1.8 to 5.1 um, times by lowering tail latency. This is um, uh, comparing to uh, previous leaderless protocols. Um, uh, and uh, they say that in partial replication, which uh, there was a leaderless uh, partial replication um, protocol Janus, they, they also improve over that by 1.2 to um, 16 uh, times. Um, um, there are graphs. So here are the graphs. These are logs. Uh, the latencies are given in log scale. So you can see Epaxos has like very long tail latency, right? Uh, previous work at last long tail latency, but tempo has very, it can go to 99.99, the uh, 100 percentile. So for this, there is long latency, but it cuts it short. Again, note that the X axis is in log scale. And similar, similar, um, um, similar results in this graph as well. Okay, they also have a load distribution uh, result. Leaderless protocols cannot do um, batching, but they say that, uh, right? So here, when the batching is on, FPAXOS is uh, able to beat the throughput of uh, EPAXOS, but they say if we increase the payload, then the batching advantage decreases. It depends on how you, um, um, how you set up your experiments, but uh, yeah, the uh, leaderless um, uh, protocols don't have um, batching batching thing. But uh, they say that their argument is that uh, we already efficiently balance resource usage, and we can, under some cases, we can match uh, that performance. Um, Yeah, so I had some speculative questions. Does Tempo always need to recover proposals? If a slot in SMR is not recovered, left empty, and the time has moved across it, can we carry on with some aborted commands? Um, this would not work for general commands, but maybe work. it could work for write-over commands. That's the point I'm trying to make here for overwriting. If it is old, uh, thing why worry about recovering and doing it uh, if this is if we knew it, this is an overwrite uh, there could be uh, some optimization there i thought about optimization of uh, um, using the taking the time of flight in in account when uh, we have this 
wide area network, multi-partition setup, but that would only work with uh, um, synchronized clocks, uh, uh, real-time clocks. Uh, um, so actually that comes, uh, that comes by um, uh, Benedict uh, Smith's work, uh, which he presented for the um, uh, Cassandra improvement. Um, general purpose transactions using hybrid logical clock timestamps. This is from loosely uh, synchronized uh, times combining with logical clocks. So that's a nice, uh, nice extension. Um, and yeah, I was also thinking that, okay, can we use this to um, snapshot isolation? And again, as another speculative question. Okay, that's it. I'll stop sharing and let's discuss. Hey, I've got a question. Can you hear me? Yeah, Alex.